All right, so today I'm painting a uh, an undead pirate. He's like skeleton or a zombie or something. I think he's supposed to be a skeleton. Probably modeled after the uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean dudes, I would imagine. Maybe not, though. Maybe he came first. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to do a pretty simple technique here, um, which just involves putting some base coats down, covering them all with Agrax Earthshade, which is a brown wash. And then either calling it a day there or maybe doing a little bit of a dry brush and then calling it a day. It's not meant to be a close-up viewed uh, paint job. It's just supposed to be get a bunch of dudes on the table really fast. So, yeah. Hopefully going to go pretty quick. Here we go. I'm going to start with Pallid Witch Flesh. It's sort of a an off-white color not quite a bone color uh, a little bit paler than that but still not bright white um, I'm gonna do this on the bones and this will uh, this will be a good a good color to take the the Agrax earth shade at the end bright enough that uh We'll still retain some of the brightness after the Agrax Earthshade, but not so bright that it's just bright white, because that's not what we want. This guy is just primed with a Bristolium. I think Rustolian camo shade sand, or possibly Rustolian camo shade uh, tan, one or the other. They look very similar. Uh, I can't remember which one this is specifically, but either one will get you where you're going. All right, so there's the the bones all painted there. Then I'm gonna go with Mephiston red for the shirt under his jacket. Not a lot of it showing here, but for what is showing, that's what I'll do. Alrighty. I think that's the only part of this shirt that's showing. Let me just double check. Yeah, I think that's part of his overcoat. Yeah. All right. So then I'm going to do said overcoat in Mornfang Brown. Sort of a orangish, reddish brown. It'll be a good color to take the Agrax Earth shade and look good on its own. This uh, this style of painting of just putting base coats and then inking over top, uh, similar to the the dip method, um, which gets used with army painter washes. Um, I'm not personally a fan of the army painter washes. I know a lot of people are though, but uh, the same style basically, just shading everything at once with. A single color 
and uh, like I said, it's not not the best for like individual super high fidelity paint jobs, but if you need, for instance, an entire crew of zombie pirates, then it'll be great. And in fact, that is uh, some of my first commissions were done in this style, where you just had to paint like a thousand Vikings or a thousand men at arms. Just did it this way. making sure to get you really don't have to cover all of the primer but I'm just trying to cover most of it uh, the Agrax Earthshade brown ink will take care of that if you don't cover it all up but you don't want to risk it because it will be noticeable if it isn't covered up Making sure to get the, the underneath part here and the inside bits there. This is a metal model, so sometimes the the inside parts of the cast can be a little gnarly. Pretty sure this is a pretty old cast, also, so. But again, if you get a bunch of these guys all lined up next to each other, they, uh, they'll sort of help each other out and not show their flaws as much. Alright, so oh, just a little bit back here. Alright, there's the overcoat. Not quite, and now done, I think. Looks correct. Yep. Alright, so then we'll do, um, I'm gonna do his boots and his gloves, I think, in the same color? Uh, no. We'll do his gloves first. I'm gonna do Rhinox Hide for this. This is like a darker version of Mornfang Brown, sort of, basically. So if you added black to Mornfang Brown, this is what you'd get. Still sort of a, a reddish kind of hue to it. Not completely just a gray brown. Which I guess is good. I don't really like 90% of the miniatures I paint and I think most people to be honest unless they are big into naval games most people are painting stuff that gets weathered, like, by dirt, essentially. Uh, it gets weathered by getting dirty. But on a ship, you wouldn't necessarily be encountering dirt in the same way. You'd obviously, the ship is not spotless. But you'd be encountering weathering from seawater and wind and stuff like that. The sweat from the person, although maybe not from a zombie. I don't know if zombies sweat. Um, so I actually don't know how they weather compared to, like if you took a a British line um, infantryman from 1750 and a British Marine from 1750, how would their uniforms differ after six months in service? I don't know.
But for now, oh, I forgot to say, I'm using Gorthor Brown now. I'm using it on the gloves. Um, for now, reddish browns seem to be like a good idea for this kind of dude. This glove is sort of intermixed with the cross guard here on his sword. So, just kind of gonna paint the whole thing Gorthor Brown and then we'll come back and figure out exactly where the sword is and isn't when I paint in the gold. There's that done. I gotta figure out what color his hat's gonna be. For now, though, I will move on to... Let me do the gun real quick. I'm gonna do that in dried bark. And then I'll, when I come back with the... I'm gonna do the metallic colors last. So I'll come back at the end and uh, paint in the gold and the silver. So I'll paint the barrel of this gun. And the stock, oh well, is the, not the stock, the, uh, the receiver. It's sort of there. Not really. mostly hidden under the guy's sleeve but a little hint of silver down there will go a long way alrighty there's that what I'm going to do his hat and I'm going to do his hat in a Dark gray, black color, Corvus black. Um, I would maybe normally do a full black, but Agrax Earthshade is not going to show up very well on that. It's not going to show up crazy well on this color, but it will show up more than, than a complete black color. So we'll go with this. It's a shame this guy doesn't have a feather in his hat. Be a, be a fun little bit of color we'd get to add. But I guess a feather would probably be pretty difficult to cast in metal, I would imagine. I'm sure there are companies that can do it, but for whatever reason, this company chose not to. I believe this miniature is from Old Glory Miniatures. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain. Alright, so just got a couple colors left here. Um, I'm going to do... Let me get the water off his sword. There we go. Um, let's see. I'm going to do his... Um, like, sash sort of belt thing and scabbard in Zandri dust. It's probably going to look pretty similar to the color we have on it right now, but the primer isn't on there too thick, so I just want to get an actual base coat on it. What's up, Michael? 
How's it going? All right. And then I'm going to decide if the pocket details are going to get painted or not. I probably should paint them a color. Just because they're sculpted detail. You should you should endeavor to always paint sculpted detail if it's there. Um, I mean, obviously it's painted right now. But what I mean is, like, don't just put the surrounding color over it actually paint it to look different there's that yep painting specifically skeleton zombie undead pirate not just any old pirate a pirate who you can shoot and he'll keep walking so then I just need a color for his pants oh and his hair yeah, his hair. Hmm. <laughs> I think we'll do his hair in gray. That sounds good to me. And his pants will be... We'll do the pants first. Do the pants in steely and drab. This is sort of like a darker version of the color we just used. Seems to be a theme. This stream, use a color, then use its darker equivalent. Which is fine. There do seem to be a lot of pairs in GW colors. Like, here's this color, and then here's the same color, but darker or lighter. All right, then I'm going to use Mechanicus Standard Gray and paint the hair. And then he'll be done except for the metal and, you know, obviously the, the whole point of this paint job, which is the Agrax Earthshade at the end. It's going to be funny. I haven't actually painted a miniature like this in a while. And when I used to paint them like this, I thought they looked pretty good. Not individually, but like as a group. So, well, first of all, he's only a, he's only one model, so that might ruin it a little bit. But I'm curious to see if we can get a decent paint job out of this. I think we can, but... Also, I definitely missed a spot on his hat that I'm going to have to fix in a second. Okay. So I'm just going to grab that Corvus Black again and fix that spot I missed on the hat. There we go. It's better. All right, so now I'm going to do the metallic. I'll start with the gold. Uh, I'm going to use Retributor Armor. What paints are you using for this guy? Uh, this is all Citadel paint uh, from Games Workshop. It's my, my go-to paint for pretty much everything. Um, I use Scale 75 for individual models that I want to look really good um, for this miniature though I'm covering him in a wash anyway at the end so I don't need the the big thing about scale 75 is that they dry completely matte um, actually I'll show you an example of that in a minute um, but I don't need that on this miniature because I'm about to cover him in a wash anyway so the finish of the paint is sort of irrelevant. How are things in Statesboro? Things in Statesboro are, you know, proceeding apace. Uh, more people could be following mask wearing protocol. Uh, less people, fewer people could be being stupid. But beyond that, you know, things are pretty, pretty okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, so here's an example of the nature of Scale 75 paint, which I'm not using, but that's my go-to on certain models. Uh, so you can see right here, if I kind of wiggle the miniature back and forth, that right here, pretty much everywhere, there's a sort of a gloss finish, semi-gloss finish to uh, 
this paint. Now if I take this guy and wiggle him, there's nothing. It is specifically this color. That'll, that will have some gloss to it. But this, you spin it any way you want. You'll get the reflection off the, the light itself, but there's nothing, nothing there. So. I work as a contract tracer, contact tracer for the Georgia Department of Health these days. I feel you on the masks. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough. But, you know, it is what it is. All right, so now I'm using an um, iron breaker. Middle, middle of the road silver. This will be the last color before the ink. I think I might paint the I think I'll take the advice I gave earlier in the video and paint this raised detail on the pockets I'm not sure in what color but in some color the quality of scale 75 looks much better than Citadel agreed um, the I personally am not uh, not smart enough, not knowledgeable enough to know really if the quality and actual like in the actual paint is different. But if you're going for a super matte finish on your miniature, the quality of the final look of the paint is better. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, but again, I'm not knowledgeable to know knowledgeable enough to know if the if the actual like ingredients or anything in the paint are actually higher quality or not. All right, then I'm just going to paint the barrel of this gun. And the sculpt is a little weird. I think it's there ish. I'm just going to paint it here and hope that's where it is. I mean, that's where it would make the most sense to be, so. And then, looks like Possibly a ramrod up here. Looks like a quad barrel. Yeah, I think that's just some artifacting uh, from the fact that the sculpt isn't great, but it does kind of look like that. You're right. All right. So there's that. Let's see if the camera wants to focus on this. All right. And then I'm gonna, I am going to paint these. These uh, pockets here. There's no blue on this guy. I'll just go with a blue. Uh, it's sort of a grayish blue. Rust gray. Why not? Yeah, the uh, the thing I'll say about this Kel 75 paint is, at least for me, it makes me feel like a better painter because the, uh, the gloss nature of... A lot of paint, at least to me, makes me feel like the paint job is not as high quality. And the matte finish is like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. This is awesome. And really, it's the same quality paint job that I would have gotten with any other brand, but it makes me feel good. Alright. So there's that blue done. So now, we're going to move to the actual point of the paint job. I'm just going to give this a couple seconds to dry here. Actually, I will base coat the base while we're thinking about it. What am I going to do for a base? Hmm. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to try a... I'm going to try dropping my paint on the floor. See how that works. Cool. I'm going to go with Calador Sky, I think. Seems like a the color I want. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. Is that what I'm gonna do? 
yeah, we're just going to go for it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm going to base coat the base in this color, and I'm sure there are now some people being like, whoa, what are you doing? Well, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Just gonna, just gonna risk it. And if it looks cool, then yeah, take that. And if it doesn't, well, oops. All right, good enough. Must be standing on water. He is Jesus, confirmed. All right, so now, the whole point of the paint job. There we go, got our nice base coats laid down. Looking super boring. Yeah, I mean, not, not, not super boring. You could put this on the table and not be ashamed of yourself, absolutely. But we're gonna add the liquid skill of all liquid skills, Agrax Earthshade. All right, I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna put it everywhere. So here we go. Gonna put it completely all over the model. We're gonna see about the metallic part. We're well, we're definitely gonna put it on the gold. I'm gonna see about what happens if I put it on the silver. I think I'm just gonna put it on the silver. Just so I can say it is truly everywhere. So yeah. Just getting this all over everything here. Really looking, looking good on the face, especially. Helping that out quite a bit compared to where it was. Shades are the only reason I have a halfway decent looking Admech army, really. Yeah, I think, uh, I think shades are the reason a lot of us have. <laughs> Decent looking armies. They're not called liquid skill for no reason. They are. They can definitely enhance a paint job significantly. I honestly should use them more uh, just for time savers. Like. It's all well and good to have a super high quality paint job, but also just getting more miniatures done is quality in its own regard. So the Frank's red hot sauce of paints. That's right. I put that blank on everything or I put that stuff on everything. Yeah, you could say that. That was me though. Like, five six years ago i put that on i put agrax or shade on everything i must have gone through 50 bottles a year of it all right so there's him with all his his agrax earthshade glory it'll take a bit to dry but that's fine because we've got a base to work on so now i'm going to take some to learn sand i'm going to take a, a crappy old Weird brush here. I'm trying to learn how to paint faster, mainly for D&D miniatures like this. Yeah, speed is... Uh, there's there's a lot of people who talk about uh, you can practice painting and practice painting and practice painting and practice painting. And unless you're going in and learning specific new techniques, eventually you will hit a plateau of this is as good as you can get. But then you can start to speed up that process. So... You can paint your paint a miniature to a, a 10, or for you, a personal 10, which is all that matters. Paint it up to your 10 in an hour. Then you can slowly start to work down. So then you take you can paint that same miniature in 50 minutes, and then in 45 minutes, and then in 30 minutes. And So even if you think that you've hit a plateau skill-wise, there's always, always room to improve. 
I'm probably spending my usual seven days on a ten days guitar unit, though. I mean, yeah, for Warhammer, I feel like the uh, putting the time in is. I could be wrong. I don't play D and D. Um, I shouldn't say I don't play D and D. I haven't played D and D very much. Uh, I have nothing against it per se. I just haven't played it. Um, and it feels like it would be more rewarding to spend more time on a Warhammer miniature than a D and D miniature, um, because. I feel like the point of the Dean really the point of D and D is the story, not so much the miniature. And you can play without miniatures essentially, but the point of forty K is the army of miniatures, so I could be completely wrong though. I mean I mean I'm sure for some people like they get a bunch of the enjoyment of role playing is painting and seeing their figure on the board. All right, so I stippled that Talarn Sand on there. Then I'm going to pull out these lovely things here. Get him off there. All right. So then I've got these things that are resin collectors, basically. I'm just going to see which one he fits in here. Oh, he fits in this one perfectly. Nice. All right, so I've stuck him in the 25 mil thing here. And now we're going to take, honestly, D&D minis I have are far lower standard since more minis only get used once as opposed to Warhammer pretty much exactly which they, Oh, yeah, that's true also. If it's not your player character, you might only use a, a mini once and then he's gone. Or even if you use a mini every day in D&D, if it's like a, a lowly skeleton, he might be dead 10 seconds into every encounter. So, All right, so I'm going to take this thing now. This is a um, just a resin form, basically, uh, from Green Stuff World. And I'm going to take some UV resin. And I'm just going to put it in, the, in here to act sort of like water. And hopefully... The uh, the combination of the base plus this stuff will make it seem sort of like he's walking through water. Maybe not, but it'll be fun and different. I don't know if I've done a resin base on stream or not. If not, you know, awesome. And if I already have and you've already seen this, well, I'm sorry. All right, so there's the resin uh, in there. And normally the downside of resin is that you would not be able to see this dry on stream. This would be a multiple hour long process. But because of these lovely two letters in front of the word resin, U and V has to be U and V. It can't be HV, TV, GV. It's got to be UV. Take your handy dandy flashlight here, which emits bluish purplish light. And you shine it at your miniature. And it, it's still going to take a couple minutes, but you shine it at this thing, and this is going to basically insta-cure this resin. Which it can be quite useful, depending on what kind of project you're working on. So, just gonna... I'm going to let this shine down on the, the miniature here. Then I'm going to do a little bit of work on top of the resin to uh, to make it look a little more like water. Hopefully. Um, I have another one around here somewhere. Let's see if I can find that. And I can show you what we're basically going for here. Where is he? Ah, here he is. Hiding behind the Terminators. So while this dries... This is sort of what the idea we're going for. This is a Viking who's... The idea is this... This right here is supposed to be like a, a wave rolling into the beach. And then he's kicking up some surf as he's striding through the water. 
So this is the sort of thing we're going for. I'm not going to do the wave on this one. I'm just going to do some surf kick up around his legs. And that should be good. This resin is probably almost dry. Probably, probably dry on top. It's probably not dry on the sides yet. Um, if you can see, actually, this that white white space right here, that's the dry resin. And so all this is still uncured in there. And it's probably cured in the center, but it's not cured on the side quite yet. But I'm going to let this sit a little bit longer, I think. And then going to risk it and pop them on out and see what we got. And this is a metal miniature, so it's probably a good idea to varnish him. Um, I don't varnish my miniatures typically, but metal is much easier to rub off, rub the paint off of, so it's probably a good idea to do so. I'm not going to on this miniature specifically because he's just going to sit on my shelf of completed stream projects. But if this guy were going to get played with, then I would definitely do it. I use a nail polish UV light thing to cure my resin minis. Yeah, that, really, I need to get something more than just this flashlight uh, if I'm going to do any serious resin. Um, but for just this, it's all right. Um, but realistically, I should have something like you're talking about or a light inside of, um, I've seen some people make like a aluminum foil enclosure basically, and then turn the UV light on in there and it bounces the light all around and cures super quickly. That's what I should use, but this flashlight works just fine for a single mini at a time. Which is all I'm really doing with this, mostly just for fun. Alright, I'm going to try to pop him out and see how terrible it goes. Sometimes it goes terrible and sometimes it goes great. If you don't wait long enough, it can be terrible. Uh, if The one thing I will say, if you're going to do... I don't know about... No, actually, I do know. Resin, when it cures, is a exothermic reaction. Uh, so it gets quite hot. So just be careful of that. If you're a, a young child, maybe have a parent around. If you're a older child, be careful. I'm just going to pop this off. Lovely. And then I'm just going to give this a, a once over here just to cure the outside. Okay, that looks good. All right, so then I'm going to take some. If there's any in here. Uh, yep. So I'm going to take some Valhalla Blizzard, which is a texture paint from Citadel. Normally meant for doing a, a snow bases, but... I have found also works as excellent surf. So I'm just going to grab some of this and put it, be on camera, and put it around his legs like he's churning up the water. Just applying this with a normal brush like normal. A normal brush like normal. 10 out of 10 speaking skills. Just want to get like a, a trail going backwards basically from his legs. 
doesn't have to be super precise, just something to hint at the water's being kicked up here. And then just a little bit in front. There we go. All right, I think that'll do. And then I'm just gonna rinse off my brush and then smooth this stuff down a little bit. I have to get ready for class, but I'll try to catch more of these. I think I could learn a lot. I'm glad to hear it. I think they are... They're, as I've said to some people, even if they don't teach you anything that you should do, then at least maybe they'll teach you something you shouldn't do. So, either way, you're learning. Alright, so that's... That's that. Just gonna paint the base rim real quick and we'll call it a day. For this, I'm gonna use Abaddon Black. And there's not much of a base rim on this guy because he's just based on a thin little washer, but don't wanna leave it just the color that it is, so. Just gonna be careful not to hit the resin. And um, while I'm painting this, the other thing that you could do if you were, uh, I just did the simple paint the base blue, stipple it with a sand color. But another option you could do is that you could add color to your resin uh, and actually tint the resin. Uh, I just found it easier in this situation to just do the basic paint the base and stipple it but if you wanted your whole base all the resin to be a uniform color that would be the way to do it I don't know with UV resin specifically I don't know if adding any pigment to it would mess up the curing I don't think it would but I can't say a hundred percent for certain All right, so there's the base room painted, and then there he is done. So a little bit more of a fancier base than maybe normal, but let me put him on this one. But you know, simple paint job, fancier base. I think he came out pretty, looking pretty good. Um, like I said, it's not a super high fidelity paint job. Just looking to get the get the point across basically and you you know you line up 50 of these guys and that works just fine all right well, that's the end of this one thank you everybody for watching and i will see you next week